All right, this is uh, EENG360 VHDL, and this would be what, part three of lab four. Okay, in part two, we set up an encoder using a case statement. All right, we have a uh, three to eight decoder, and uh, we concatenated the enable and the control signal, and then we used a case statement on that concatenated variable S, and then just looked at the possible values of S and set up a wind clause right here to assign our output. Well, the next step here is to add a um, uh, test bench file. So let's go down here and do VHDL test bench and do TB encoder. Make sure VHDL test bench is uh, selected. Click next. There's only one component here to test, so that would be encoder. And next and finish. All right, that'll put a test bench file in there and it will encapsulate the encoder dot VHD component. Okay. All right, so if we look at our little explorer window right there, we see we've got um, our encoder VHDL and then TB encoder is a test bench file. All right, let's go up here and uh, get rid of all the comments. Uh, we'll leave that one there because we might need that later. Entity block is uh, empty. There is where you declare your component right there. Okay. Now you've got some signals, and let's prefix these guys with TB so they know they come from the test bench file. And then there's TBY. And then the next three signals are the clock. We don't need those, so I can delete that. And then I've got my begin block. First thing I do in the begin block is I instantiate the component I'm getting to test. Going to test. Well, these are the variables of the component. Uh, the ones on the right are the variables of this file, which we prefix with TB for test bench. Okay. And I am not going to use my clock process. So this first process here I can get rid of. So let's delete that. And then we have the sim stimulus process. Now, some people have asked me about this label right here. You know, you don't need that. You could take that out if you like. And we don't have a sensitivity list. Well, when you don't have a sensitivity list, that process will execute over and over and over. And that's why we put that assert false at the end. If you remember right, we did that, uh, what was that thing? We had something like uh, at the end of this guy, we put in... Um, yeah, we did something like that. Assert false, and I think there was a statement called report, and then you could put some error message there. And then, um, let's see, you take that off there, yeah. So, yeah, because when you have a process statement that doesn't have any variables in the sensitivity list, it will just execute over and over and over and over. And what we do by putting this assert false in there is we terminate the process so that we only get one trace of our test data. All right, well, let's see. Let's go use our for loop again. And um, here, what we're going to have to do is, um, let's see, we want to enable the device, or let's actually disable it. And we'll say T B enable, and we'll set that guy equal to a zero. Right? So the device is device disabled. Right? And then we'll do a for, for I in zero, Two. Okay, now let's see. We want to iterate over all the possible controls. The control is A, which is three bits, so that's seven. And we will loop. And you terminate a for loop by um, end loop. Okay. And let's put some stuff inside here. Um, first thing is we want to do, we want to wait for 15 nanoseconds. And then what we want to do here is we want to assign the uh, control signal. Okay, and how are we going to assign it? Well, we need to make sure our final result is a standard logic vector. Okay. And then I want to operate on i, but I can't convert i directly to a standard logic vector. I got to convert it to a sign or an unsigned first. So we can use the to unsigned function on i and do that. i is going to go from 0 to 7. This function right here is going to convert i from an integer to an unsigned, and then the standard logic will convert the unsigned to uh, a standard logic that we can put in the variable TBA, which is, in fact, standard logic vector. Okay. Now, when you use the two unsigned, you got to throw an extra argument in there, and that's the number of bits. 
Well, we're going from zero to seven. Uh, if it's unsigned, that can do that with three bits because we're doing unsigned, all right? So that's going to iterate over all the control inputs, zero to seven, when it's disabled. If we come down here and change the TB enabled to one, then it will be enabled. Okay. And we'll just iterate again, and then we'll assert false. So here we're going to run through all the controls with the device disabled. Here we're going to run through all the control values with the device enabled. And then here we're going to terminate our simulation. Okay, And that's it. So at this point, let's uh, click on our component, encoder, and then we'll get a green check here on behavioral check syntax. Okay. And then select TB encoder up here and then do the behavioral check syntax on that. Okay. Oh, we got some errors. Well, let's see what the errors are. And at this point, you probably already know what the errors are. Line 44 doesn't like this. Well, we know what that error is, right? We have to add that extra package. Take that out, move that up to there, and now we're bringing in not only the standard logic package from the IEEE library, we're also bringing in the numeric standard package. And that package has the um, function to unsign that gave us a compile error a minute ago. All right, so we save all that, select test bench, do a behavioral check syntax again, and let's see what happens. Great, it worked. All right, so at that point, I can just uh, make sure my test bench is highlighted. Double click simulate behavioral model. And let's see. We should get a nice simulation that uh, goes through all the possibilities of an active load decoder. Okay, it's compiling here. Machine's running a little slow. Just hang tight. Should finish up here in a sec. There we go, getting some more information. All right, uh, process simulate behavior model completed successfully. All right, we got a little message down there. Window should pop open any minute now. Well, my computer is really going slow. Oh, let's see. And there we go, and yes, okay, so uh, notice that uh, the whole window, when we zoom to view, just takes into account the test scenarios we had. The assert false ended it instead of going completely to one microseconds, which would be 1,000 nanoseconds. And uh, let's see, we can kind of scroll these guys down a little bit, uh, resume to full view. I can open up these, and notice I've got enable up top. Well, there's enable, it's disabled. And then uh, on TBA, I run through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Those are all the possible values of A2, A1, A0. But notice nothing happens at the output because the device is disabled. Then at 400 nanoseconds, I enable the device. I drive 0. Y0 asserts. Put a 1. Y1 asserts. 2. Y2 asserts. 3. Y3 asserts. Put 4 on the A2, A1, A0. Y4 asserts. 5 on the control. Y5, 6 on the control. Y6 and 7 on the control. Y7 asserts. And there you go. Active low, 3 to 8 decoder. And let's see. What else can you do here? Um, you know, right click, radix, binary, if you want to see all your values in binary. Now, it doesn't make sense down here. Let's see. What is this? This is a, yeah, on all these guys, right? Um, if I right click that and said to binary, yeah, you see how you get the dot, dot, dot? So it's, you can't really read them all there unless you zoom in. So at that point, you might just want to do um, uh, hexadecimal on there, okay? FE. And then also, there's some tricks you can do over here. You know, you can select this guy and move it up above. So now Y should be in the middle. And there you go. Now you've got Y in the middle. But what I like to do when I do these diagrams is I like my clock usually to be up top and then my enable signal and then any of my inputs which would be a would be considered an input and then my outputs below that so by clicking on them and dragging you can move them around so typically clocks enables inputs and then outputs make for a nice timing diagram all right there you go i am done and that was part three of lab four thanks for watching bye